something different for you today. I'm going to attempt to predict all 24 teams correctly in this League 2 24-25 season. Let me know your predictions in the comments down below and your thoughts on my predictions. If you're angry at me predicting your team lower or even higher than you think your team is going to come this season, then I'm sorry that you need to go on an anger management course. I can understand you being maybe a bit upset or shocked, but get over yourself and get real um, if, if you think that I am having an impact on your team. But um, do, if you do disagree, let me know why in the comments down below. Be more constructive. Let me know why you think your team will do better and why you think they may indeed do worse than I predict your team to do. Um, I'm aware there'll be a lot of Bath Tate fans, so let me know where you think we're going to come this season. Like the video if you did. Subscribe if you're new on the road to 1,000 subscribers. And let's get into it. So to these next two teams who I think will be getting relegated to the National Leagues, I do apologise to their fans. I hope you prove me wrong, but I don't think you will. I've got Accrington Stanley, who are they? Exactly. And Newport County. Now I'll start off with Accrington. They've lost John Coleman, and I think it was a pretty brainless decision from um, Mr Holt to get rid of him back in March. And John Dolan, he hasn't impressed me um, at the back end of last season. They've conceded a lot of goals, which is some of it couldn't be said under John Coleman. They shipped 22 goals in 11 of his final 11 matches. Um, a few batterings on there as well with four goals conceded. Um, the key men from last season have been gone, and that was from the Paul season in which they finished 17th. They had the youngest side in the league as well, and that's going to continue. Um, Brad Hills, who came on loan from... Uh, was it Norwich? I think it was. He's gone, um, but probably their best player, Tommy Lee, who I'm a big fan of, has gone to MK Dons. Pritchard as well. Longello, Nolan, you know, big, big players for Accrington who kept them up last season have gone. Have to replace them. I think in Brad Hills, replacing him with Aaron Lawson's a good replacement. Donald Love is going to be a decent signing, um, and they've robbed. Boston's two strikers in Jimmy Knowles, a former Mansfield Academy graduate, gra graduate apologies, and uh, Mooney as well. Uh, but I'm not convinced with the signings. I'm not convinced with the manager. 23rd, it is Newport. Um, Nelson Jardim has got his first season as a manager in football. He was managing um, a Portuguese B-side previously, but he was a fitness coach at Swansea and a few other clubs as well. It's a complete new style of play, and I think that's why he will come unstuck and won't see his season out. Then where do Newport go from there? New ownership as well. There's a lot up in the air at Newport at the minute, and I do feel like they've lost some key players as well. You look at Evans, Drysdale, Delaney, gone. Um, Baker Richardson coming in there, marquee signing. I, I can't see him performing for Newport either. So I think they're in a bit of a crisis again, like Accrington. Just staying up by the skin of the teeth, I've got Cheltenham Town. Now, I think this is a club that looks to me to be in turmoil. They've appointed um, not Gary Johnson, yeah, Gary Johnson, the former Cheltenham manager, as the director of football. That's got the fans divided. Um, Luke, Luke Young, to be fair, from Wrexham is a fantastic signing. Um, but apart from that, there's not there's not a lot there. Um, I think Michael Flynn, when you look at his track record, Switzerland, when it was going well, he looked brilliant. They were playing a great style and looked like they were going to get playoffs. They lost the key men, they fell off, they went on a terrible run. Walsall, the same happened there, um, going on a terrible run, losing his job. And he seems to get stuck in these terrible ones and they can't get out of it. And I feel like if, if he starts poorly, which I think he will, He'll be gone by November. And then where do Cheltenham go from there? I think that they don't look to have a clear structure in place ever since the loss of Michael Duff. They seem to have gone on a downward trajectory from there. And it's a shame to see because Cheltenham are a very likeable football club. But I just can't see them this season getting anywhere near. Now another team that's very likeable, not really for the Braff City fans, but it's Harrogate Town in 21st. Now Simon Weaver's done an unbelievable job. The question is how long can he keep that job up for, along with his dad who is the owner. Now they've lost some key players again, and they, they seem to now, because that, that's sort of what, what Harrogate does. And this season it's Abraham Odo, really good pacey winger, who's gone to Peterborough I think it is. Rod McDonald who's gone to Notts County, fantastic aerial centre-back who they're going to miss his aerial presence. They've still got Anthony O'Connor and Folds in that back line. Liam Gibson as well uh, and B Burrell so there's still good players in that back line but I think they're going to really miss Rod McDonald's presence at the, at the back and I think they're relying on um, Thompson for, for output in terms of goals and assists this season like, like they were last season but this season without Abraham Odo and up front they've got nothing. Now in 20th you may be wondering you haven't mentioned Morecambe yet I don't think they're going to go down 
they've got Deza Adams, of course, the, um, the, the the old Bradford City manager, who uh, you know, probably one of the most hated men who who was in Bradford around February before he got sacked. Um, I despise him, and he will perform miracles again this season. Um, there's talks of maybe a takeover happening, so we'll see where that goes. If he can get them to perform into some sort of level, they could end up like a Gillingham where they're bringing a few players in, in January. Um, but the players who they brought in, they signed 15, 17, 20 players in one day. Um, it's, it looked like 70 when I are looking at the club statement. George Ray is a fantastic signing, one who I w would have liked at Bradford City, and he's a top-end League 2 player. Um, he's going to be a real um, rock at the back. They've kept Slew, who they, they released earlier on. Songo's come back at the football club. They've got White from Barrow, Lewis to left-back. Hendry at right back. So from those signings and Derek Adams, we know how he's going to play. They're going to be organised, hard to break down and they're going to be a really hard working gritty team and I think they'll just have enough to get over the line and maybe build on that if they do get no new owners and hopefully they do because they're in a massive state this football club. They've been one poorly and I hope that they can get it all resolved and they can stay in the football league. Now it's time for one of the newcomers into the Football League and I think they've never been in the Football League before and it is Bromley Football Club managed by Andy Woodman and he's done an unbelievable job at Bromley. They have been back financially in the non-leagues and one player who has come into the Football Club this summer is Dinanga from Gateshead. He's a player I'm really excited to see because I think he's a fantastic talent, um, the, the wide player for, from Gateshead. He's one to watch for Bromley. Um, but they, they haven't brought in loads of players, but what they have got is an organised team who knows what they're going to do. They're going to be gritty, they're going to be hard to beat, they are going to get a win at Valley Parade and they know, they know the rules and I think they're going to be a, a, a tough team for anyone to come up against and I think they will be very similar to how we've seen Sutton and Matt, uh, Matt Grimm. Now in contrasting styles of play, I've got Grimsby Town in 18th with David Artel at the at the real. I think that Grimsby in the future, if they keep the patience with David Artel, could be pushing on to League One and could be playing this really good free-flowing football and expansive style of play that's easy on the eye if you like that style of play. And that could be great for Grimsby. But he tried playing it last season and they got thrashed in games and he had to revert to a more pragmatic style of play. It got them over the line and I think he'll have to do that again if he wants to keep his job. But I think Grimsby are very ambitious owners. They will want more than that. I don't think they've signed enough to, for that style of play either. I think they've still got too many players who were there last season who can't play like that. Um, so I think that's where they're going to come unstuck, uh, Grimsby. Now we've got a massive drop-off in 17th and it is Bower AFC. Now they had a great season last season. They just missed out on the automatics. Never mind the playoffs. They fell away at the final hurdle due to fatigue. Um, that, that, that's what I'd put it down to anyway and they had a great squad but an unbelievable manager in Pete Wilde at the level who got them over achieving um, with, with resources I, I, I accept but the replacement of Pete Wilde is my concern low block, not much pressing, time wasting in games where they needed to win to get anywhere near the playoffs and they fell away because of his tactics in my opinion not to mention the players they've lost now that back line was integral to Barrow's success last season. George Ray, I've already spoke about James Chester in there as well. They've still got Canavan. They've lost Ben Whitfield, who um, you know the, the master at creating chances for Barrow. And I don't feel like they've replaced them. And I feel like that's going to be a massive drop off defensively and Stephen Clemens. So for me, I can't see Barrow sustaining where they were under Pete Wilde, and I see them dropping off to 17th. Following that, a team who were unlucky not to finish in the automatics last season and lost out in the playoff semi-final on penalties is Lee Bell's crew, Alexandra, of course. Now, they had a great season last season. I think Lee Bell will be the reason why they still have a very solid season in League 2. Because last season proved to me that he is a very capable manager, adaptable to injuries and styles of play in different oppositions. And that's why they got results and that's why they were a real tough team to play against because you didn't quite know what crew you were going to be coming up against. But when you look at the players they've lost, you look at Rio Adebisi, you look at Luke Cofford, you know, many others as well, Nevitt, players who they had on loan, and you've got some young players now who have to step up, and that next batch of young prospects coming through, Billington, Holacek and Tabiner, um, some of those were injured last season. I think it's a year too soon for them to be stepping up and have to push that crew team towards the playoffs, whilst they haven't really brought in any players of any note to replace the players that, that they had as well. So I think 
they're going to come unstuck a bit this season. I think they're going to have a, a, a regressive season. But I, I hope Chris Dick will leave out because he is a good manager and he's shown it. And they need to rebuild now for the next generation of players coming through. This team are wanting to be a playoff contending side. They want to be pushing on. They probably should be in League One. They've got a good fan base. But it is Walsall. Uh, last season, they had the lowest number of possession in, in the league under Matt Sadler. And I, I, I'm all for direct sides and sides who don't have possession. I think it can be more entertaining. But Walsall fans are very divided on Matt Sadler. I think they might have weakened with Omari Hutchinson um, in Omari Hutchinson. They would have loved Omari Hutchinson. It's Isaac Hutchinson, of course, who's moved on to Burton, I think. Um, he's going to be a massive miss. The goals, the assists, the creativity, the consistency and you know that, that sort of play that you need where you become a one-man team he, 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 they were sort of in that vein a bit more so last season and Charlie Lakin from Sutton's a, a good replacement for him but I don't think he's going to hit those levels so there will be a drop-off and then like I say other players in, in, in those areas as well I don't think they've improved I think when I watched them last season they were great down the left side they weren't great down the right Albert Adorm has come in, maybe he can help that, but playing the 3 5 2, I don't think it'll suit him, and I think he's past it. I think he's going to really flop for Walsall. So I'm just looking at him, and I'm not seeing enough there for them to be competing to where they should be. And in 14th, we've got another side that have just been relegated from League One. It's Charlie Adams, Fleetwood Town. Now, he had a great time of it um, last season if he came in early. Of course, they got relegated, but Charlie Adams himself gained 25 points from his 23 games in charge, which is good enough to keep you up if it were maintained over the course of a season they developed some players as well um, they had a young lad in, on loan from Celtic who came in the centre back he developed him into a more midfield player Zach Medley is a really good um, centre back option for them uh, Bolton the right back is a very solid right back and dependable the midfielders Helm, Virtue and Bonds are, are really good midfield options Virtue being the standout coming from uh, Blackburn, Blackpool and Lincoln I think he's played for before a very solid League 2 um, standard midfielder probably more at the top end to be fair um, but when I'm looking at the wide players um, Phoenix Patterson's a, a good option out there but the strikers I think there are a couple of strikers short to be anywhere near the playoff charge and I think that's where it will dry up for Ch Fleetwood and Charlie Adams now in 13th, I've not mentioned the club in crisis at the minute, um, false promises maybe have been made from Clem, um, the owner of Swindon Town, but I've got them in 13th because I really rate their signings, I rate um, Kennedy as manager from Lincoln, I thought he was fairly sacked at Lincoln, but you know that they've gone to do well under um, Skabala of course. Um, I like the signings. I think they've made some real solid League 2 signings and signings that have improved their squad from last season. Harry Smith from Sutton, I would have loved at Bradford City. You know, target man, he will guarantee you double figures. Like Delaney from um, Newport, from a Bolton centre-back, and then Wright, Will Wright from Crawley. What a signing that is. Great ball-playing centre-back, but is good in a physical battle as well. Quite a tall player. And they've got um, Hall in as well from Colchester. Now, I think... He isn't the best player, but he's dependable, he's reliable, and he's a good frame. So they've got real height and consistency, I believe, in the back line. And Will Bright being the standout. Longello's come in as well. And then the star signing is Oli Clark. What a signing that is. When I saw him sign for Swindon, I thought, right, they've got intentions here. And it sort of fell away from Oli Clark coming in. But in that midfield, he's going to add tenacity. He's going to add determination and bite and he will carry you over the line in games and I think they've got a bit of that in this squad at the minute that they weren't that sort of a team in 12 I've got Nigel Adkins Tranmere Rovers now I think he is the man behind the wand he's the reason why they will get them into a higher finish than they've been used to in the last couple of seasons the, the missing piece in the puzzle to get them into the playoffs for me where some people have predicted them is Rob Apton I don't think they've replaced him they were heavily reliant on him they were sort of a one man team they have brought in some good signings around him they've got the core of McGee um, Hendry the midfielder Connor Wood um, Turnbull you know they've kept a good core of players in there I think strikers over you know Davison Norris uh, Jennings um, they, they will get your goals and, and Dennis but I, I don't see anyone standing out where yeah 20 goals are coming from him guaranteed so I think goals will be a problem creativity will be a problem um, but they will have enough to get over the line in games to get them in 12th 11th I've got Salford, I weren't too sure where to put Salford, I don't think anyone knows where to put Salford so I've sort of gone for mid-table 
I think Robinson's a fantastic coup for them as a manager. I'm a massive fan of him. He will make them aggressive. He will make them gritty. And teams won't want to play against Salford. And they will be a bit more direct to what they were used to under Neil Wood. Whilst wanting to get the ball down and play. Um, Negru's a fantastic centre-back. With Chester to show that back line up a bit. With Tilt um, presumably as cover. Edwards and Garber are great full-backs at League uh, 2 level. With Woodburn and Stockton, Stockton, yeah, Stockton coming in as the attacking options. I'm a massive fan of those as well. Uh, Woodburn hasn't ever really proven himself, um, has worked with Robinson at Oxford, and I think them two coming together again will be a good partnership. He knows how to get the best out of him, and he knows him as a person. At League 2, I can only see him thriving, but um, it's, it, it's an unknown quantity. I think same with Stockton. I think Robinson knows, will know how to get the best out of him. He will get him um, thriving and he might get him around 20 goals a season but for me there's just too many question marks around Salford for me to put them anywhere higher but I think there's enough quality in there there's enough in Carl Robinson not to put them any lower but I think Carl Arlo are going to come 10th I think um, when I look at the squad I think it's an overrated squad on, on paper to be honest with you you look at the key signings in Charlie Wyke and Aaron Hayden they, they are injury prone they are a sickness um, waiting to be to happen and Whilst on the day they are top end, you know, League Two players, even maybe top end League One players, and if you can keep them fit, yeah, they probably will get playoffs. But they're relying on those staying fit. Behind Charlie Wyke in striker, they have got Luke Armstrong again, really good League Two striker, and we'll have to see if Georgia Kelly can become a reliable goal scorer for Carlisle. Um, in midfield, there's a solid midfield in there with Callum Guy and Josh Feller and other players in there who c can perform on, on the day and get them over the line in games. It's a decent back line with John, John Mellish as well and Ben Barkley who scored against Bradford City. So they, there's, And Harry Lewis at the back if you can get him performing how he was. So there's a lot of pressure on Simpson as well to get it right this season after him coming 24th. They're on poor momentum. It could become divided if it isn't hit you know, from, from, from the off the, the, the firing. I think Carlisle could be in a bit of trouble if, if not. In ninth, the final promotion side from the National League is Chesterfield. Some have them higher. I don't think many have them any lower. Madden and Dunkley are great signings. Gordon as a left-back as well. A wing-back is a really good addition to that squad. And they've already got Cole Clough, Dobra and Jacobs. as great creativity for Madden and Grigg up front. Paul Cookson, brilliant manager at this level. I think he's you know, a top-end League One Championship standard manager. If he could just sort his voice out, I think that would be a lot better for people to handle him. But, um, yeah, I, I like what Chesterville have got. I like how they've recruited. They haven't changed the team too much, but that jump to get them again into the playoffs, they would have needed a lot more reinvestment, as we saw from Notts County last season. Just missing out on the playoffs, I've got Doncaster Rovers. Now, this is a controversial one, and this is one that... It was a last minute change. You know, I was changing this top eight, top, well, the top ten, I was changing the top ten all the time apart from first. I'm just looking at our back line and there's concerns for me. Wood's a year older, he's 40 at the end of the season. You know, he, he was losing his legs last season, but he was dependable. Anderson and Olawu, when Doncaster were really struggling, they were really poor. They hadn't improved that back line, they've kept it the same. I like Maxwell at left back, Sterry's a really good right back. But the goalkeeper as well, before they had Lolo Tyler, they, they, was, they were poor. They were leaking goals. He was a top signing for them last season. They replaced him with Sharman Lowe, but is it from Chelsea on loan? He's a question mark. And the big miss is Akeem Adulakan. They replaced him with Jordan Gibson. I'm not keen, I'm, I'm not impressed with Gibson from his time at City and elsewhere. I think he's a real inconsistent player, replacing him with a player who was Mr. Reliable and consistent and he was scoring goals for fun at Doncaster, going them over the line in games. Um, Joe Sabah has come in. Yeah, I think he's a fantastic signing. Uh, they've got Owen Bailey still there. Billy Sharp will have goals in him off the bench, Ironside as well. So there's real quality in there and I like what I'm saying. Luke Molyneux and Grant McCann's a year into his term and he will be implementing that style and we saw it back in the last season. So there's a lot to like about Doncaster and Ryder can get into a top three. But I think the defensive concerns, not replacing Adulakan with those goals, I think they're going to struggle a bit this season but they'll still have a good season in eighth, just missing out on where they need to be though. So the top seven, I haven't mentioned Colchester United yet. Now's the time for Colchester. They're in the top seven. Now they're climbing from just missing out on relegation zone in the last couple of games of the season to getting top seven. Um, but you see it every season. There's always that one team. It was Carlisle. It was Stevenage. 
I think this season it's Colchester. They've got Jack Payne, a fantastic midfielder to partner with Arthur Reid. Um, they are missing Jay Mingu, who was great on loan last season. They are missing Jaden Fevrier, who was an unbelievable attack-minded dribbling player who wanted to get direct at players. He's a massive miss. Strikers is the lot there. I, I'm not. It, it's a question mark. Lyle Taylor, he could excel and get 15, 20 goals this season. Uh, Tavide, as the backup, as the young player, could have a great breakthrough season. It's unknown. Got Flanagan, good lift as well. It adds aggressive, it adds height, it adds aerial presence in there. Um, you know, Hunt as the right back as well. Orlando as the left back's decent. Macy is a very solid goalkeeper at this level as well. Um, and like I say, Danny Cowley, they're going to be an aggressive side. They're going to get draws in games. They're going to get one nils. They're going to scrap for their lives. And I think he knows how to get a team like Colchester into the playoffs of the league too. And I think he'll do just that. In sixth, I've got Wimbledon under Johnny Jackson. The building blocks uh, they're a nine side to play against last season. Um, they were happy for draws. They're happy to time waste, and I think they'll do that again. But they've improved the squad. Um, the attacking options that I like. They've obviously got Tilly, who can play on the left. Who can uh, be a versatile. Who is a bit of a flair player and a flash in the pan sort of a player. You don't know if he's going to flash hot or cold, but he's a very interesting player to watch. Um, and I, I like him. The, the attacking options have got Stevens. Piggott, obviously, if he can recapture his form at Wimbledon, he'll be a great signing for them. Bugle and Kelly, um, who came in from um, Solihull Moors in January. So they've got some four really good options there in that 4 4 2 system. The midfielders as well, they have lost Armani Little, but they have got Jake Reed still in there. They've still got Ball in there, but added that with um, Smith from Lincoln and Maycock from Solihull, who are aggressive midfielders who uh, complement Johnny Jackson's style of play and defensively they were really strong last season I think they'll continue that again is Port Vale who I've got in fifth Darren Moore either be the reason they go up or the reason they don't and I know that sounds very Michael Owen and obvious but that that is where it'll come down to it won't come down to personnel for me it will be on Darren Moore he's a pragmatic manager he's a manager you know if they're one nil up they'll sit back on that and defend it through um, they've got Curtis if he can recapture his form from Portsmouth maybe five years ago is an exceptional signing. Stockley, Tollage, Biepa, who's a hot prospect striker. Um, so they've got real good options up front who are, you know, offer different qualities. Um, the midfield stacked with Crowsdale, Chislett, um, even though if he can recapture some of his former form. And George Byers, the, the, the obvious key player, um, potentially the signing of the League Two season. I um, this is the moment you've been waiting for, I'd gather. It is Bradford City. I've got us just missing out on the automatics. Now, it's all Graham Alexander, the reason why I think we'll have a good season. And fourth is a really good season for us, considering where we've been in League 2 for these past six years. But we need to get out. We are my playoff winners. I've got to have faith in the boys. Um, but Graham Alexander, I think he's going to get us running harder. We're going to be aggressive. Teams, I think, will fear us. I don't think teams fear us enough, but he's got that grit about his teams that I saw in those last seven eight games the last season if we can carry that on momentum is a massive thing in football taking that confidence in he developed players whilst he real last season players are a year older he will continue to develop your point and your kelly's your Kavanagh's and a few others as well the signings we brought in aren't impressive you know i, I don't think they're impressive a lot of yous don't think they're impressive but what it, it does bring is a better depth to the squad now the top three, these are three teams I think will be going up this season. I will be giving you my League 2 title winner. But in third, I've got Gillingham. I think I predicted them top three last season, to be honest with you. And they stunk the place out, to be honest. Um, two on the back end of the season and they made poor decisions. You know, his team's a, 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 a very workhorse team, the, the high energy. He's an adaptable manager. Some games they'll probably have more possession than the opposition, maybe towards 60%. Other games they'll have maybe 30% and be more direct and sit in and be a really tough team to break like they will be against Bradford City, no doubt. Uh, the signings, uh, Nolan adds goals, that's something they really lacked last season. Rowe adds pace and flair and I think this will be his star season to be honest. I liked McCrew when I saw him but he didn't have the end product. I think he'll find that this season at Gillingham and it's something they needed a player like him in the forward areas. And the centre-backs are the best up there in terms of the pairing of them. Masterson, great on the ball and he's a, a physical threat. Um, Aimer as well and Shadrach Orgi, I'm a massive fan of as well. So I, I, I like the team all, all the way out and I like what Mark Bonner will do with his team and I think that's why they will get out of League 2. 
Second place, I've got Notts County. Now, Stuart Maynard, for me, is the only issue I can see with this Notts County side. And if he doesn't get them promoted, if, if they don't start quick, he'll be gone. But if he doesn't get them promoted, he'll, he'll struggle to get another job. The defence was woeful last season and they've massively improved it. They've got Matty Platt, Mr Reliable, Rock at the back. They've got Jacob Badeau, who will be one of the best League 2 centre-backs this season. He's got the lot. He's got the ball-playing ability. He's got the pace. He's got the physicality. He's got the aerial presence. He's got the lot. Um, Rod McDonald as well adds that consistent aerial presence as well. Nick Cerula, who, you know, great attacking player who for Crawley last season. He'll only add to that in left wing back. Um, and they've got good depth now as well. That's something they've added um, in those areas. And the attacking players, I don't need to bore you with it. Dan Crowley, Jody Jones, Jatta will, you know, out outshine this season because he ain't got long staff there. He will get 20 goals this season. They've got Aaron the man still. Uh, the midfield options, you know, that they've got quality all the way around. Then my title winners, uh, to round the video off, are MK Dons. Now, this team is complete, in my opinion. I, can, I can't see how they can't win this league. Um, how anyone could predict anyone else to win the league, I think, is, is impossible. I can only see it being MK Dons. I'd be willing to do a forfeit of your choice if they don't win the league as well, um, because I just can't see anything else. Um, they've got Mike, Mike Williamson, who, when he came in, got 62 points from his first... Um, for, from 33 games, which is, you know, unbelievable, um, because they, they were right down there, got them to a playoff semi-final, will the playoff semi-final hurt them, momentum's a key thing, they got thrashed by Crawley, and they were cut to shreds in multiple games last season, against Stockport, against Bradford City, against uh, Mansfield, and in that Crawley game, that's something that could continue, but the defence, that was the concern, they've improved it with Sam Sharing from Northampton, they've improved it with Luke Offord, and they've improved it with Lawrence Maguire, they offer aggression, they offer height, they offer consistency, and I think that's what they needed in that back line, Tomlinson, best left back in the league, he will go on to be that this season, the midfield is stupid, it is stupidly quality, they've got Liam Kelly, Tom Cowell, Tommy Lee, Alex Gilby, Stephen Warren, uh, Warren or whatever his name is, Pritchard, and they've got Lemon Evans as well from Stockport. The striker position could be a problem, um, but they have brought in um, Endry from Salford, who, who does get goals at this level. They've got Ellis Harrison as well. So I just think they've got quality all the way around the squad. They'll score goals even if the striker problem is a problem from midfield. And defensively, I think they're massively improved. And Mike Williamson is a top manager. So I can't see how MK on start in this league. I will come back in May and review these predictions. But let me know yours in the comments down below. Uh, if you disagree with me, let me know why you disagree with me. If you agree with me, let me know why you agree with me as well. I'll like the video if you did. Subscribe if you're new. On the road to a 1,000 subscribers now. Um, all the support is massively appreciated. And before you go, um, let me know down in the comments down below. Now, I've set up a league. You don't have to join it. But it's just a bit of fun. Um, EFL Fantasy. It's um, the, the code will be in the description down below, and I'll put it in the comments as well. Uh, the, the league code. Um, let, let me know if you want, if you want to join it um, by joining it. And but what? Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see a weekly um, sort of episode of me drafting my team and um, re reviewing it. And you know there won't be any prizes, but you will be shouted out uh, the, the top the top three. We'll shout the top three every week. Um, so let me know your thoughts in that in the comments down below. Join it if you want to. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm rabbiting on now, so have a good one.